For me, this story begins about 15 years ago when I was a hospice doctor at the University of Chicago. And I was taking care of people who were dying and their families in the south side of Chicago. And I was observing what happened to people and their families over the course of their terminal illness. And in my lab, I was studying the widower effect, which is a very old idea in the social sciences, going back 150 years, known as dying of a broken heart. So when I die, my wife's risk of death can double, for instance, in the first year. And I had gone to take care of one particular patient, a woman who was dying of dementia. And in this case, uh, unlike this couple, she was being cared for by her daughter. And the daughter was exhausted from caring for her mother. And the daughter's husband, he also was uh, sick from his wife's exhaustion. And I was driving home one day, and I get a phone call from the husband's friend, calling me because he was depressed about what was happening to his friend. So here I get this call from this random guy that's having an experience that's being influenced by people at some social distance. And so I suddenly realized two very simple things. First, the widowhood effect was not restricted to husbands and wives. And second, it was not restricted to pairs of people. And I started to see the world in a whole new way, like pairs of people connected to each other. And then I realized that these individuals would be connected into foursomes with other pairs of people nearby. And that in fact, these people were embedded in other sorts of relationships, marriage and spousal and friendship and other sorts of ties. And that in fact, these connections were vast and that we were all embedded in this broad set of connections with each other. So I started to see the world in a completely new way, and I became obsessed with this. I became obsessed with how it might be that we're embedded in these social networks and how they affect our lives. So 